to 21. Joining us now from Dadian and Associates is a political analyst and host of our state of San Diego, John Dadian. John. Good morning. So we've got the uh, the big minimum wage deadline here, the deadline for, for um, signature gathering. We're getting there, but as you and I have talked many times, realistically, uh, you and I will be talking about this for the next year and a half. Uh, this week is the deadline, and then the process is that the then uh, the next uh, hurdle is the city clerk has 30 days to do a sampling to verify uh, the, the signatures. And if the signatures are verified that there is enough, then it goes to the city council, and they have a certain window to pass it. So it's still going to be many, many weeks before we uh, know if it's actually on the ballot. Now, there's a... There's a lot going into this uh, signature drive and also the don't sign it drive, on the other hand. In fact, I got an email yesterday from Bill Walton uh, telling me don't sign it, misleading information, so on and so forth. I replied, I don't think this is really Bill Walton's email address. That email got rejected. Um, It came from, I believe, info at whatever it is, don't sign the petition dot org or whatever they've set up on that in that regard. What are the arguments from both sides? Do we have some some petition gathering that is not on the up and up? Well, you know. Certainly, there's going to be mistakes, honest mistakes, but the accusations on both sides are that one side is saying the petition gatherers are not telling the truth, and the petition gatherers say that the uh, people on the other side are harassing people uh, who you know voluntarily want to sign it. So, you know, it, it, it's just a very emotional issue, and I think that's what you see coming out. You do have several prominent people, such as Bill Walton, on the side of supporting a minimum wage. Um, but you've got some very prominent people, including Jerry Sanders and the business community, you know, that are p- pushing this referendum. So th- this is a very hot button topic in San Diego. All right. And obviously, we'll, we'll see if we get those signatures gathered. I've seen some of the signature gatherers out and about. Is it are they pretty likely to, to, to get the, the necessary signatures to get this put on a ballot? I think so. They're doing two things uh, to really ensure this. They're going for a great number more signatures than required, just so so there's no some mistakes, or quite honestly, so there's no sabotage. People that intentionally, you know, put false signatures on. But also, they're trying to go for they're trying to verify the signatures before they submit them, and and that will also, you know, uh, increase the possibility uh, that they'll have the right amount of signatures. So I think what I'm hearing is that they're going to have enough signatures. All right, Uh, John. Let's. Let's talk a little bit then about the uh, the six California initiatives. Speaking of uh, ballot measures and and signatures to get on the ballot, uh, John Dating with Dating Associates in our state of San Diego. Six Californias will not be on the ballot for us. Right. Uh, there was a couple of people. And actually, I, I don't have the figures, but they spent quite a bit of money just to circulate this to try to get it on the ballot. It did not qualify. Now, the rumor that I'm hearing, the one who's really upset, is Chris Merrill now can't be governor of San Diego. So Yeah, uh, I was looking you know, forward to that. Yeah. I'll tell you. But, you know, it really, it really was almost ridiculous because the process, you know, for for a, a new state is so cumbersome, et cetera. And it really would dilute the power that California has now. You know, we have 55 elected. 12 votes. You know, we have 53 members of Congress. That's a lot of clout. And California does pretty well in Congress right now. Yeah, because of all the clout that we have. But, John, let me just float this out there. Let's suppose that they got enough signatures and they needed, what, 1.37 million signatures, and they said they only got about 66% of that. So uh, let's suppose they got their signatures, and let's just suppose that California voted to split into six states, which then means that we have to take this to Congress because Congress would have to okay that. Are there enough votes elsewhere in the country that would like to see California not have as much power and as much clout as what we've got right now in uh, in Washington? Well, certainly there's people that feel that way, but then you really have to ask the question, uh, you know, for the good of the of the entire United States, would there be enough votes to actually support this? And I don't I don't think that that would be at all, because, again, they would have to look at the six regions and several of those regions would become rural states. And if you look at some of the rural states, again, the, the problem that we have there uh, that throws then when, then we're talking about how that throws a curve into the electoral vote. So I, I just realistically don't. Don't think it would ever uh, gain much traction at the national level. Yeah, you know, that's a great point that you make. And then let's also keep in mind that would mean senators from each one of those new states, which would uh, throw the balance in the Senate uh, off. Uh, great points. Great points. And then finally, we've got uh, some some uh, some heavy hitters coming in for some local races here. John Boehner is coming to San Diego. 
Uh, that's that's what I hear. It's supposedly John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, is coming in for a call tomorrow, which is not a big surprise because Boehner, as Speaker, whenever he goes into a district, raises big money. A lot of people want to see the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And this clearly, uh, this 52nd Congressional, is one of the targeted races nationwide. Um, not only is it targeted that both parties want to win, but uh, it, it's the possibility that either party could win because the registration is uh, so evenly split, not only among Republicans and Democrats, but there's a large independent uh, vote there that really will probably swing this election. So th- this one is going to go down to the wire and money, you know, is going to make a big difference. All right. And obviously they're both going to be trying to uh, pitch themselves as being the candidate that can appeal to those independent voters as well. You betcha. All right. John Danian with Danian Associates. John, always a pleasure having you on. We'll talk to you next week there, my friend. Thank you, Chris. Take care. John Danian with the state of San Diego every week here on News Radio 600.